Okay, so, good news. I figured out what was wrong with my audio. Apparently, I was using the uh, microphone that's already built into my computer. Uh, but it's kind of frustrating, because I had just recorded two different videos. The audio was absolute garbage. I couldn't figure out what was wrong. And then I noticed, huh, the mic setting doesn't say it was using the webcam. So, here we are again, uh, with another question and answer, uh, type video. And the subject is, um, uh, what are some mistakes beginner writers make when creating a character? Have some coffee with me today. Gotta have my morning coffee. All right, let's get started. It started. Uh, first comment by Emma Lindblad. Making flat characters with only one or two personality traits. Perfect characters without flaws, giving no room for growth because they are already perfect. Unrealistic personalities and without reason behind why they are like they are. A perfect character is never interesting. Even, like, if you want your character to be really strong power-wise, give them something weak mentally. Like, maybe they're very vain about their power and, re and refuse to accept the fact that they can make mistakes. Or give them, like, a really bad fear. Like maybe they're afraid of crabs and they happen to be having a battle on a beach with a lot of crabs. Automatically they're at a disadvantage because of their weakness. If a character wins constantly in battles and everything, they're not going to be interesting characters. Uh, and what am I doing on the screen here? Well, I had done a full illustration, well, almost a full sketch, uh, for the previous videos that didn't get recorded well because of the audio, audio problem. So I'm just doing, I'm attempting to do chibis because I'm going to be working on sticker designs because I'm hoping to get back into the convention game soon. So I'm going to be working on sticker designs for my series, Legend of the Erased, and my side series, uh, which is a hired project, Coexist. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be doing on screen here. It may be slow, because I'm also reading comments. Uh, I may keep recording after I'm done reading the comments and just speed up the footage. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Okay, second comment by Julian do dado throwing away characters to make your mains seem more relevant i think if you're going to create a character to give the story depth they should be fleshed out thoroughly in detail uh here's an example this is katie katie loves her sister and that's her one dimensional trait oops her sister dies Katie now dies as well, because she has nothing to live for. Main character is now sad. Now, imagine Inuyasha. Imagine if Kagome was... Like... Imagine if Kagome ac or not Kagome, Kikio. Imagine if Kikio actually had no point. Uh... I think Bleach actually makes the same mistake. Didn't Rukia have, like, a lover from the Soul Society that she, compl that, like, died? And that had absolutely no point except for the fact that he looked like Ichigo? I don't know. I'm just rambling. Uh, by Kirsty Jones. Don't make your original character perfect. Give them an equal amount of weaknesses to strengths. Sometimes more weaknesses are better. A good protagonist suffers and endures.
Okay. Uh, I think we're at the fourth comment now. By Misha Xiong. I can't pronounce half of these names, I'm sorry. The personality doesn't fit the characters and constantly change because of the way you want the story to go. There isn't any internal or external conflict going on with your characters. Or the character is too overpowered that they win every single battle thrown at them. Mainly poor writing, con poor conflict writing. What I like in stories is when there's something going on inside the character rather than just outside the character. Otherwise, it's just not interesting for me. If it's only physical battles going on, it's not interesting for me, especially if the character wins every single battle. That's not interesting to me as a reader because, well, I know they're going to win the next battle too, and there's nothing for the character that would that is there to get me interested. Okay, next one by Bradley Close. Making your character overpowered. Once again, overpowered characters. Trying too hard at making your character seem cool. This goes back to something, uh, show don't tell. If your character has to say that he or she is cool, you've made a mistake. You've already failed at writing this character. Uh, now, if this character is like kind of a joke kind of character to where he's he or she is like let's just say they're a really big dork and they constantly say they're cool that might work but again even that if overused can actually get really annoying uh, Soul Eater makes this a mistake with I want to call him Kronos but I think that's the guy with the black blood I don't know. Uh, okay, let me try to pronounce this name. By Justin Theralt. I think that's it. They're weak. They need power. They will become the best ever. They only lose to main antagonist type characters. This was something that Naruto started. You got a character that's a bit of an underdog. And they want to become something great. So they start gaining power, they keep getting stronger, and even though they are portrayed as super weak, they're constantly, they win almost every battle, except for against the main antagonists. Uh, now I haven't watched the entirety of Naruto to completely say that this is true for Naruto. Um... But from what I saw of Naruto, it definitely is the case. Okay, now we're on to... I don't even know what number this is. I'm, I'm done counting the comments. By Chanel Tonya. Trying to make your character just straight out perfect. Hey, I'm this gorgeous redhead. I get good grades all the time boys drool over me constantly. I can speak seven languages fluently. I am the top sword fighter in my class. I do perfect with everything I do, even the impossible. Like, I don't like those characters. Where's the development? Where's the accuracy? Perfect characters are not relatable. If you want someone to care about your characters, they need flaws. Because people with the same flaws are going to relate to them, and it's going to bring them closer. If your character is too perfect, no one's going to care about them. Perfect isn't interesting. Unless, again, you use it in a gimmicky type of way. For example, uh, which this actually gets mentioned later on in this comment section. Uh, Saitama from One Punch Man. He is, you know, the perfect picture of being overpowered. He punches things, they die. But 
he's got some personal flaws. While even though he's, you know, super overpowered, I don't know what's going on with this drawing. This is what happens when you don't use guidelines, people. People just have tank legs. Uh, anyways. Uh, don't make your character perfect. Give them flaws. That will make them likable. Okay. Here is one. It depends on the audience you're appealing to. Since young children don't comprehend nuances very well, as we get older, we understand the, the uh, complexity of personality. My pet peeves is lack of originality, especially for female supporting characters. Example, Kagome to Inuyasha or, or Hime to Ichigo. The damsel in distress is really irritating for modern readers who view w women as equal in capability. <clears throat> Thinking oxymorons and contra contra and excuse me and contradictions. A young prince who is ordained king before he's ready. Kings are thought to be wise, but youth equates to inexperience. They contradict, and the readers will hope the best for him while accepting his mistakes before they even happen. Uh, there was a couple of replies to this that I wanted to look at, too. Uh, there was one thing in this comment that actually kind of bothered me. <clears throat> that young children don't understand the complexity of personality. That's the thing. We assume they don't, but they do. They may not be able to put it into words like we, like adults can. But they understand it. I, as a kid, understood it. I liked the complex things. And I think we are wrong for assuming that kids just don't understand. Kids are a lot smarter than we take them for. And I think if we started accepting that kids are, in fact, smarter than we think, uh, then maybe kids might actually start being smarter. Uh, as for the damsel in distress, uh, what was it? Akatsune, Akatsuki no, no Yona? Akatsune? Yona of the Dawn? I don't know. I can't pronounce the Japanese one. Uh, I'm garbage. Look at this garbage. Uh, Yona of the Dawn. Uh, she starts out as kind of a damsel in distress character. Yona does. But over time, she comes around and starts being a really strong character, someone that you can rely on. And if you wanted to do those damsel in distress type trope, that's the way to do it. Sure, let the character be saved a couple of times. But let there come around a time where the damsel has to save the hero. That would be interesting, and that would uh, also turn the table around from the generic damsel in distress. Uh, what time are we at? Okay, well, this video has gone up to 14 minutes. So I'm going to call it quits here. We still have a good bit of uh, comments left. So I will take those and make a part two. That's actually what I did a second ago, but again, I couldn't get my audio to work. So I am going to reread all of those, or read all of the rest of the comments and come back with a part two. Uh, this has been Magic Allison with the question and answer. Are there any mistakes that you see even actual anime make? Uh, let me know. And maybe I'll even make a part three if I get enough comments on this one. Alright. Have a nice day.